um, perhaps the most vulnerable and smallest of our patients, newborns. Every 15 to 20 minutes in this country, a baby is born who's impacted by the opioid crisis or other substance abuse. Several years ago, as we saw this impacting our Middle Tennessee region, um, we did what we do best here at Vanderbilt. Um, we collected our team to both personalize care as well as create a family-centered approach that would help both moms and babies achieve more optimal outcomes after they leave our hospital. At that point in time, we had a fairly traditional model across the United States with all babies who were impacted by the opioid crisis staying in our neonatal intensive care unit. Several of us around the table are neonatologists, and we recognized that we had a growing population of babies who were in the NICU for weeks at a time, often separated by their mothers. As providers of pediatric care, we also knew that there had to be a better way. So under sponsorship by the hospital administrative team, we pulled together what we do all the time, which is a multidisciplinary approach to try to figure out what is the best way to care for both the mom and the baby, and to help lay a foundation of um, success that would help these babies who are vulnerable in a social situation that may be more, more vulnerable to achieve both an immediate support in the postpartum period but also to really lay a foundation for intermediate and longer term outcomes. I'm proud to say that with the collective group of many of the people around this table from the Vanderbilt side, that we have successfully made this our standard of care in this hospital. Um, most of our babies with neonatal abstinence syndrome do not spend time in the neonatal intensive care unit. They are, spend lots of their time, and in many cases, their entire hospital stay right with their mom. Moms are satisfied, moms and babies have a better outcome. And we've built on top of that in the past year some of what you're gonna hear about this afternoon, which reflects both learnings and research around how to take that model and take it to new heights. So this afternoon, what we will be doing is we'll first hear from Dr. Stephen Patrick, who's an assistant professor of pediatrics and fellow neonatologist, and who is the director of our Center for Child Health Policy. He will then launch and turn the program over to several of his colleagues. In our obstetric side, we have Erica Munoz, Rodriguez Munoz and Dr. Risha Sangani. And then we will hear from members of our team, Hope, Michelle McPherson, and Aaron Munn. I'll then turn to Admiral Joua to make a few comments. And then with any bit of luck, we'll have five to 10 minutes left for open dialogue to hear and engage with the First Lady, as well as to answer any questions and have an open dialogue. Thank you for visiting with us here today. Um, as Admiral Drouin mentioned earlier today, the opioid epidemic is having a substantial impact on our communities. In 2017, nearly 50,000 people died of an opioid overdose. The impact on our communities is palpable. You know, for me as a neonatologist, my first experience was through the eyes of my patients, infants having drug withdrawal. And you know, we're trained to take care of infants that are very small or infants that are very sick in terms of birth defects. And this population was a little bit different. Infants with neonatal absence syndrome, uh, they are more irritable, they can have feeding difficulties, uh, they can have breathing difficulties. For severe neonatal absence syndrome, they're also treated with morphine. What we've seen over the last decade or so is a massive increase in the number of infants diagnosed with neonatal absence syndrome. Over the last decade, there's been about a seven-fold increase in the number of infants having drug withdrawal. And in 2014, there were more than 30,000 infants born having drug withdrawal in the United States. And that's more than the total births in Alaska and West Virginia combined. A pretty striking amount. And to put that another way, that's about one infant born every 15 minutes on average in the United States with drug withdrawal. That's accounting for about $500 million in, um, in hospital costs nationwide. You know, but looking at the problem of the newborn by themselves in isolation misses the opportunity to improve outcomes for families. And we really have to step back to understand the concept that where the infant is nested within a mom as well as a community. And our research group has really taken that approach. Uh, first, we've, we've looked at what policies and characteristics of communities may lead to opioid use as well as neonatal abstinence syndrome. We've looked at how, what the barriers are to treatment access for pregnant women with opioid abuse disorder. We've also dug deep into how we can improve care for infants that have drug withdrawal. For pregnant women with opioid use disorder, accessing treatment in the United States is difficult. And many pregnant women are not receiving evidence-based therapies like buprenorphine and methadone, both of which we know reduce the risk of death for mom and increase the chance that the baby will go to term. Here's why it works. 
for women who are using opioid like heroin, they go through a rapid cycle of uh, intoxication withdrawal, intoxication withdrawal. We know that that's stressful on the, on the fetus and it can lead to preterm birth and again it increases mom's risk of overdose. Um, when they are on a medication like buprenorphine or methadone, it sort of stabilizes that out and it makes it more likely that they'll go to term. But in a recent study from our group, we looked at Appalachian providers uh, in four different states that were disproportionately affected by the opioid epidemic. Um, and we found that among those providers, only half of them took any insurance at all, and only about half of the outpatient providers would accept pregnant women. But in many cases, in areas that are disproportionately affected by the opioid epidemic, being, a pre being pregnant or having insurance appears to be a barrier. But of course, in addition to our research, we focus on how we can improve, improve care for our families as well. And our model at Vanderbilt has been simple. Keeping moms and babies together improves outcomes for both mom and the baby. Uh, care at Vanderbilt begins with a comprehensive care clinic for pregnant women with opioid use disorder. We'll hear from them in a, in a minute. Uh, that has both prenatal care as well as medication-assisted treatment. You know, because clinics like ours are difficult to access and they're rare around the United States, many of our women travel hours just to receive care here. At birth, we do things differently too, as, as Dr. Rush mentioned. Traditionally, infants that have drug withdrawal are whisked away from their mom into a neonatal intensive care unit. And these environments are loud and chaotic. Um, you may be, in, in most infants, in most neonatal intensive care units, the open bay, you may have a ventilator and next to that baby and heart lung bypass. And for infants that are going through drug withdrawal, this is particularly challenging. Um, what we've done is to take infants out of the ICU unless they have a medical condition that requires them with breathing problems. And we've supported that dyad with uh, child life as well as lactation consultants to promote breastfeeding uh, for the mom. Since September, we've had more than 100 infants in our program that we call Team Hope. We're treating far fewer infants with morphine, more moms are breastfeeding, mothers are trained, supported by our child life specialist, and infants and moms are staying in the hospital shorter, about half the time they were before. Reading the headlines, it's not hard to view the epidemic of uh, the opioid epidemic through the lens of despair, but instead I view it through hope. Uh, my hope is bolstered by the families I care for and see, and the opioid epidemic really serves as a reminder that we are our brothers and we are our sister's keeper. I think it's also an opportunity for us to transform public health systems to improve the care that we deliver to both pregnant women and infants. I want to thank you for shining a light on this population. Um, too often in conversations that we have about anything, we miss pregnant women and infants, and so I'm grateful to you for shining a light on this patient population that we care for uh, so much. I'm going to turn it over to Eric and have to talk a little bit about the, the prenatal clinic. Hi, Mrs. Strzok. Thank you very much for being here. We're really excited that you're here. I'm excited for you to just listen to what you know we, we are offering here at Vanderbilt. Um, like Dr. Patrick has stated, um, we really try to approach the mother with an interdisciplinary team. We want to make sure that she gets all the care that she needs. Um, so my role as one of the social workers on our obstetric drug dependency clinic team, um, you'll meet Dr. Sangani, who's our obstetrician. Um, I really, my job is just to connect with the mothers, um, connect with them on their stories. And most of the stories that I hear from them um, really uh, surround trauma, both simple and complex. Um, as a social worker, we are trained to really advocate for the most vulnerable populations, and that's really what my role on the team is. A um, couple of, like I said, there's a, a lot of trauma that surrounds these women, and a lot of trauma that surrounds the aftermath of, of birth. Um, and we really try and advocate them, advocate for them throughout their time with us. Um, I will speak about uh, this particular um, panel that we're having. I did ask a couple of our mothers to come, and they, um, they were reluctant to say yes due to the stigma that it holds for coming out publicly and discussing what their traumas were or how they uh, started their substance use. Um, and then familial, familial stigma is something that they also have to um, experience as well. Um, so Dr. Singh, did you discuss that? Um, so as uh, Dr. Patrick said, I'm one of the uh, obstetricians that, are, that is a part of our drug dependency clinic here. Um, our clinic started about seven years ago um, where we have probably taken in about 700 women and you know, on a yearly basis we take care of about 250 women. So it's, it's, and these women come from all aspects of uh, Tennessee, sometimes even out of state. Um, because they can't find the care that they need um, where they are. Um, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. When I went into, into OB, I never th I thought about delivering babies and taking care of very uncomplicated women. 
Um, you know, I didn't, I had no idea that a few years ago I would decide to specialize in this very complex patient population. Um, but I have to say that I've been pleasantly surprised to take care of these women um, over the last few years um, because of how fulfilling it has become. Um, I see women who come in in all stages of, um, you know, deciding to get treatment. Some come in saying that um, I'm pregnant and I have this problem, what do I do? Some come in having already gone through our Vanderbilt um, emergency room and need stabilized on medication-assisted treatment um, and just want to do the right thing and, and, and come to us for their prenatal care um, as well as to continue their treatment um, for their opioid use disorder. Um, and I can say that, you know, it is, like I said, it is very fulfilling to see um, how these women, the transformation that these women undergo during their prenatal care and into delivery um, because they just want to do what's right for um, themselves, their, their babies, and their families. Um, you know, it, it's just remarkable. Um, I can tell you that it's very, very rare that I go through a clinic session without some tears being shed. Um, and so I really, I just want to thank you for being here and for, um, you know, putting an emphasis on this issue. Um, and I have a wonderful team here that, um, you know, with all of us together, we, we, I think we do the best we can uh, to take care of these women. So. Sure. Uh, again, welcome to Nashville. Welcome to Vanderbilt. Thank you for being here. Um, my training as a child life specialist, really, um, my lens is to look at the stress that children and families are experiencing and trying to alleviate the stress or, or prepare them for managing that stress. And in this particular population, um, there's the stress that the infant experience um, with not just the drug withdrawal, but as a newborn, they've just gone through a huge transition. They are adjusting to the world around them um, outside the womb. So they're dealing with that. And then for these babies, in addition to the um, substance exposure um, and what that brings for them. In our um, setting for moms that have been uh, taking short-acting substances, uh, short-acting opioids, they would stay for a three to five day stay. Um, for moms that are on longer-acting opioids um, that the children have been exposed to, they stay for five to seven days. Uh, what that means for the moms is once they deliver, it's very likely for the majority of our um, patient population that the moms will be discharged from their postpartum care before the baby's ready to leave the hospital. So one of the things that, that we do in combination with our drug dependency clinic is help these moms know what the pathway is going to look like. We can help to uh, you know, moderate some of the stress of the unknown for them. Um, there are videos of our labor and delivery that we can help them um, view ahead of time. Uh, Erica and Corey are their social worker that does the women's groups. Uh, they talk about birth plans with moms, um, helping to build mom's agency in this process too, um, so that they are taking more of an active um, role in their own care and in the baby's care. Um, Michelle, in our previous roundtable, talked about the importance of involving moms um, and really seeing them as partners in how we, as a team here, are caring for their child. Um, part of my role is to, to support that work by reviewing with moms as they need um, the signs and symptoms of withdrawal, um, helping them to start to interpret their infant's cues, um, and then how to respond appropriately in a way that will help that child manage the stress of withdrawal, um, the, the symptoms that they're experiencing. Um, so I meet the mom sometimes prenatally when, when Michelle and I have an opportunity to, to go to the women's groups, um, and that's nice for continuity of care because then the mom has somebody that she knows in the postpartum period, um, and then continue to see them through their admission here with the infant. Um, and sometimes that's three days, sometimes that's five days, and for, for patients that need, our infants that need medication treatment, it can be longer, um, sometimes two weeks, um, and sort of journeying along with them, sort of supporting them to build their confidence in parenting, um, particularly in a situation where they feel guilt and sometimes shame around what they've already, they feel that they've already done to their child. What we try to reinforce for them is that they have made the best decision to take the safest care of their child 
by getting into treatment and by focusing on their recovery. And we do a lot of talking about how important it is, even in that postpartum phase, when it's very difficult with a newborn to take care of yourself, that they really do need to take care of themselves and rely on the support people in their lives to help them to do that too. Thank you so much for taking time on your busy schedule to shine a light on this population. Um, I'm very proud to say that I work with this um, group of people and that I work for a facility that is willing to single out this population and dedicate time and energy to helping these babies and moms improve. Um, I am a lactation consultant, but I'm also an RN. Um, so I deal with these babies from a medical standpoint and from a breastfeeding and lactation standpoint to help the whole family unit. And the work we've done here, I think, is basically centered around the fact that we are keeping these families together, um, working to decrease the stigma, to let people know that addiction is a disease, and that we have to do something to help that, to provide non-judgmental care. And that's how Aaron and I start to meet the moms prenatally, um, build trust with them, let them know they have made good decisions, and that we want to help them continue to make those decisions. And one of those decisions is to breastfeed. So we know that breast is best, but with this population, it truly is. It's not just food or nutrition for these infants, it's truly medicine. Um, it helps with uh, decreasing the symptoms of withdrawal. Um, it helps the actual act of latching the baby and bringing the baby close is warmth and bonding and also helps to decrease the tense and some of the irritability the infant may experience. But the best thing it does is it helps mom feel successful. They feel so helpless, especially in a NICU situation. If there's lots of doctors and treatments and things going on that they have no control over, the one thing they can control is they can provide milk and nourishment and treatment for their infant. And it helps them to feel successful and to get over some of these, the guilt and bad decisions they feel that they've made. Um, we know that it also decreases the incidence of relapse. The release of oxytocin and prolactin and the provision of the milk itself helps to emotionally heal these women so that they don't have a relapse and they stay successful. And we want to continue to care for them. The main challenge that we're seeing right now is our postnatal care. Um, we're working on decreasing costs and getting these women out of the hospital and decreasing the treatment we have for these infants. So then we lose them once they're out the door. So we've really got to focus on housing and how we can get these families together and not return them to environments that are unsafe or that don't promote breastfeeding or bonding with their infants. So it's a very multifaceted problem. And today, I think we're just hitting the highlights. There's so much work that needs to be done. And thank you so much for coming and listening. I want to thank everyone for the great last few hours. We were here for a few hours, our team from HHS, with this incredible group of people. And uh, I try to think of the adjectives. And three that came to my mind were, were this group has been highly effective in their treatment of babies and moms. They've been pioneering in their approach, and I think they're a leader, not only nationally, but globally. And to me, they're inspirational. I'm a pediatric critical care physician, uh, so I worked in a children's hospital. I know the passion, the emotion that has to go into treating every patient and their families, and, and these individuals here really uh, represent the best of what we can have to offer. I also made sure everyone knew that uh, I am the lead for opioids policy. Thank you.